Good morning and welcome to the Bradenton Convention Center right here in beautiful Bradenton, Florida. My name is Scott Jamison. I'll be bringing you today's action between the number one Central Florida Patriots and the number three Polk State College Eagles. It almost has the feel of a state championship type game. Two of the best teams in the country facing off today. Keep an eye on a couple players. Phoebe Wu, one of them for Polk State College on the other side for Mid Florida Conference, a loaded team for Fl Flavia Saketa and the Patriots. Natalie Alvarez, a setter, very, very talented player. And she is out of Arecibo, Puerto Rico. So there's just a couple. We'll get into a few more as we get going. About two or three minutes away from rosters and starting lineups and maybe four or five minutes away from first serve. So stick around, stay right there. We'll be back from the Bradenton Convention Center live shortly. You're watching the FCSAA Sports YouTube channel.
Well, we are just about ready to go here from the Bradenton Convention Center. Beautiful, actually it's in Palmetto, Florida, but right on the uh, cusp of Bradenton. Beautiful part of the state. I'm a little bit biased, I'm from St. Petersburg, so born and raised. A little bit biased about the west coast over here. 
We're right here on court number one, game number one of the tournament. We've got Central Florida, College of Central Florida Patriots, the number five team in the country facing off against the number 10 team in the country, the Polk State College Eagles. And this has the feel, as I mentioned, of sort of a state championship type game. And if you hear that in the background, that is the St. Pete. Well, Tyler, I'm glad we didn't put our camera down there on the bleachers. We had talked about it and uh, they are excited. It looks like some of the baseball players are here. They brought a couple buses. I was talking to athletic director Davey Gill and uh, very cool, very cool. You gotta love to see that, the enthusiasm from the student body for their athletics team. So that is who you'll hear probably a majority of the match um, in the background. So you can, you can watch, that's St. Pete in Daytona. And you can watch, that's game number three on the FCSA YouTube channel. You can watch them both at the same time, turn them both on. On the floor for the College of Central Florida to start things off, Alyssa Gage, Buse Ean, Kristen Shim, Chelsea Chavers, Natalie Alvarez, there's the set from Alvarez. Outside, cut shot wide from Rafaela Fonseca. Point Polk State. Tried to cut that one down the line, came off the outside of her hand and just faded a little bit too much. Well, it is sort of tough to tell from where we are located on who is serving. It looks like number eight for Polk State, Chris, Christina Castillo, the server out of Lima, Peru. They are ahead two to nothing after that ace. A good start for Polk State against the top team in the state, Central Florida ranked number one in the FCSAA poll. There's a set. Nicely dug out on the other side by number 26, Phoebe Wu. There's a kill from Fonseca on the outside. Now two to one. Polk State still with the advantage, but Fonseca will now serve. Wu, dug out by Alvarez. Outside to Busein. Dig right in the middle, put away. Well, Polk State did not play up to their normal standards over the last half of the conference season, but they are still an exceptionally dangerous team in this tournament. And one that could win it all very easily. This, this year it is pretty loaded as far as who can win. That is a nasty serve. I'm trying to see a number. Her hair is in the way there. I believe it's number seven, Katia Garcia, Katia Garcia. She is from Chihuahua, Mexico. You'll see a, a lot of international players in this tournament. There's only a couple teams that, um, Santa Fe being one, Pensacola being another, that have a lot of players from even in the United States of America. It's just, it is an international sport. There's a lot of talent all over the world. Timeout Central Florida. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Now we are back live in Bradenton, Palmetto actually, but we'll call it Bradenton. That is 
a vicious, vicious serve. But a nice dig by Central Florida, a nice quick set in the middle, and Alyssa Gage puts it away, and that's why they're the number one team. They make plays, and right out of the timeout, they got done exactly what they wanted to get done, which was to get a point, stop the rally of Polk State, and Gage there to do it. Right in the middle of the blocker, a little bit slow getting there, partly because Central Florida ran such a quick play. There's Wu, blocked, and another point for the College of Central Florida. Over on the other court, St. Pete is trailing Daytona State 5-4 to four in the early going of set number one. It is a best of five. First team to win three sets. They'll go to 25 for the first four sets, and if it goes to a fifth and final set, oh, that is a beautiful play by the setter for Polk State. It is tough to see those black numbers on those red jerseys. I'll get used to it here after a little bit, but I am... Not as young as I used to be, Tyler. Tyler uh, Tyler Allen doing the production. So if you hear me, I'm not just talking to an imaginary friend. Tyler is standing here with me, so. May have to have his younger eyes help me out with some of this. Six to four now, the score, Polk State still with the advantage. Again, this is a matchup of top 10 teams in the country, not just the state. Central Florida ranked number five in the country, Polk State number 10. Coach Armand Devalle, coach of Polk and Flavia Saqueta for College of Central Florida. Two of the best in the country going at it. They both, especially Coach DeValle, wear their emotions on their sleeve. He is just a passionate individual. And there was a touch. Yes, good call by the official. Good call. That ball, you could see it change directions and sort of go up. So a good call by the line judge on that one. All over it. Serving for Central Florida, Busse In. That one blocked, sent right back by Tainan Paiva. Busse In serving again, six to six. That's just about what we thought it would be. Outside, up and over, Chelsea Chavers with the dig. Alvarez. And then a kill on the outside for Kristen Schim. She's out of Worsland, Germany. So going down the list here, you got Puerto Rico, Germany, Brazil, Puerto Rico, Montenegro, Brazil, 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 Turkey, and a couple players from Florida for Central Florida. For Polk State on the other side, Puerto Rico, Orlando, Florida, New Zealand. There's a, there's a new one. Coconut Creek, Florida, Chihuahua, Mexico, Peru, Florida, Florida, New Zealand, Slovakia, Slovakia, Japan, and China. So. Again, just a very cool atmosphere here. A lot of international players. It has, it has the feel of almost like an Olympic event because you have you have people from you have players from so many different countries. There's Phoebe Wu. What a dig by Chavers. Central Florida not able to keep it going. Tyler and I were down walking on this surface. It's one of those sport court surfaces. It's sort of put together now. Most of these players are used to playing on this surface from playing travel ball and whether they're at Wide World of Sports playing a travel tournament and some of those other places that might use the sport for it. So they're definitely used to it, but it's still a surface that we were walking on and we both said, man, I would not want to slide around on that. Well, good effort. It hits off of the metal back there that's hanging up that curtain. And so that will be out in an 8-7 lead. Shim will serve for Central Florida. Phoebe Wu, 291 kills on the season. She averages over four per set. There she is right there, receiving the serve, set in the middle. Big time swing and wide on the attack, just wide. On the other side, Busse In, 260 kills. Rafael Fonseca, 288 to lead the team. Alyssa Gage, 194 for Central Florida. Katia Garcia actually leads the team, leads Polk. They're calling a legal contact violation on Polk now 10 to 7, Central Florida. Katia Garcia played 92 sets, 333, 333 kills. Wu only played 69 sets. She battled some injuries this year, but with over four, leads the team in that category per set and is one of the tops in the country. So timeout, Polk State. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back. You're watching the FCSA tournament right here on the FCSAA Sports YouTube channel.
Back here in Palmetto, Florida, the Bradenton Convention Center. Central Florida has taken control of this match. Still just a three point lead, a lot of time left obviously. That one was tough to, okay that's Polk. I couldn't tell which side of the net that was on. I was looking for the official to make a call so that one went through the block, a point. So both teams after they've called their timeouts, they've come right out of the gates and gotten a point and stopped the rally. So the timeouts have served their purpose. Phoebe Wu serving, she's from China, Shanghai. That one blocked, nice play. It's a lot tougher than it looks. That was Annalise Fitzy. She had to hang in the air, and then on her way down, the ball came to her, and she just sort of flicked it with her fingers and sent it back into an open space on the floor. Really nice play by Fitzy. The timing of something like that has to be perfect, and she made a really nice play. Sent across by Alvarez. That one hits off the antenna, so a point for Polk State. And just like that, three straight points, and we'll see how Coach Saketa decides to handle this one. Each team with just a one timeout left in this first set. Phoebe Wu serving for the Eagles of Polk State College. They are in red. College of Central Florida in blue in the near court. Well, it's interesting. Both teams, net violation called on Central Florida. Both teams after the timeout has been called. The team that had the rally, the other team called the timeout. Both teams have sort of struggled a little bit out of the timeout, so we'll see if Coach Saketa decides to call one and see if she can't flip that momentum back and make her adjustments. That's blocked and in, so five straight points for Polk. I have a feeling I can smell a timeout coming. We'll see if Coach Saketa lets them play through it or not. But again, both teams have used their timeouts to make adjustments, and we'll see if that happens again. That's Fonseca blocked. Set in the middle, Phoebe Wu just rips one down the middle, no defense home. Chelsea Chavers tried to get to it. Nah, nobody's gonna get to that one. That one had some steam behind it. Now six straight points. A substitution coming for College of Central Florida. Checking in is Ivana Vojvovic. I think I said that one right. She's out of Montenegro. Vojvovic. Outside to Fonseca, she takes a little bit off that one. She'd been blocked a few times, so I think she thought better of trying to rip one. Outside, that time she lets one go, but right there to dig it out was Keisha Santana. Well, Central Florida picks up a much needed point after six straight by Polk. And Coach uh, Saketa let her players play through that. And that may be beneficial as this set continues. She's able to hang on to that timeout and maybe make some good use out of it later. Polk State, the set. Phoebe Wu up and over. Chavers, nice play. Set outside. Another beautiful dig this time by Christian Shim and a point for Central Florida. Well, those plays, you know, they don't, they're not noticed as much as the kills, but those digs, those one-handed diving digs, and those plays that are made like that that keep, keep points alive are so important, as is the passing. Both teams have passed the ball, ball very well. There's an example right there, right to the setter. It's gonna be a tough angle, able to get it over. Chelsea Chavers there, set outside to Fonseca. Fonseca over to Wu. Wu in the middle, big swing. That top spin, it cuts down right at the last minute and stays in. Wu with another kill, that's her fourth. Substitution coming in to serve for Polk State is Nicole Boots, sophomore out of Orlando, Florida. I'm sorry, that's not, I've said that's Daytona on the other floor the whole time. It's actually Miami-Dade. Pensacola and Daytona play next. I apologize. That is Miami-Dade and St. Pete, not Daytona. Same colors, but uh, and that's going to be a timeout for Central Florida. Timeout, Patriots 15-12 to 12 lead for Polk State. Good one going here in this first set. 
You are watching the FCSAA Volleyball Tournament. Three teams from this tournament will advance on to Casper, Wyoming in the NJCAA Tournament. We'll be back right after this. Back here in Palmetto at the Bradenton Civic Center. Dug nicely, and they're going to say that one was down. Looked like they might have kept it alive, but it hit that sport court surface. And again, after a timeout, Central Florida comes out and gets the point. So that's three timeouts called between the two teams. And all three times, the team that called the timeout was able to stifle the rally of the opponent. Back set to Busein, wide and no touch. And a point for Polk State. Christina Castillo serving. Eagles ahead by three. First set, best of five. Round one of the FCSA tournament. Double elimination. Service, reception, error. And that's who they're going to go after on the serve. We'll see if Central Florida can cover up Fonseca a little bit. It's not her specialty. She is good at the net. Not that she does. Not that she can't reserve or receive a serve, but that is not what she does best. And they tried to go at her again, but just too much cut on it and out. Neither neither team has really committed too many errors as far as service goes in this match, and that's a key in these tournaments. You have to minimize your mistakes as much as possible cannot give away free points to a good team. That one off the tape and down. And a point for Central Florida, so 17 to 15 now the score. And a race to 25 here in this first set. Fonseca to serve, 17 to 16. Appreciate you tuning in to this match. And to clarify, yes, three teams from this tournament will go. They used to have to play a team from a different district. Now, that is determined here. As the District O qualifier. So District M, N, and O will all represent the state of Florida. And before, it's no slight to the district that they played, but it wasn't much of a match ever that I can remember um, since, I, since I've been following this volleyball here. Um, the team from Florida would go up typically into Alabama area, and it was always three sets, and it was just a, a whitewashing. I hate to be so... Um, brutally honest, but it just was. And I don't know if that was the reasoning or if they just restructured. Uh, but now Florida does get three out of these eight teams will go to Casper, Wyoming. Off the hands and down, a kill for Polk State. Now 19 to 17. Back and forth, just like we expected this one to be. As advertised. On the other court, 19-19 between St. Pete and Miami Dade. These are four juggernauts. All four of these teams could go to Casper and probably make some noise. The other four teams that are going to play at 1 o'clock 
could do the same. Palm Beach and Santa Fe will be right here on this court. And you'll have Pensacola and Daytona on court number two. Well, back and forth we go. One point separating these two teams. One point separating the two teams on the other court. What more could you ask for here in this first set? We'll see which teams make the adjustments. Which coach plays the chess match? Which team, which coach is looking ahead? Two moves. That'll probably be the team that wins in these first few matches. And called a violation there on Polk. So now 19-19, Central Florida right back in it. Tied it up, looking to take the lead with the serve of Ivana Vojvovic. Phoebe Wu outside in the middle. Off the hands and out, a kill by Natalie Alvarez. She's the setter, she's only 5'6", but when she is on the outside, they will let her take some swings. The timeout, Polk State, both teams have used both their timeouts, so after this one, we're playing it until the end. We'll see if Polk State can do what both teams have done and come out of their timeout scoring a point. We'll be back, you're watching the FCSA tournament right here on the FCSA Sports YouTube channel. Back at the Bradenton Convention Center, Scott Jamison here along with Tyler Allen on the controls. Natalie Alvarez, excuse me, Ivana Vojvovic serving. Outside to Shim, dug out by, that was Santana. Gonna be a legal contact called on Alvarez. She doesn't do that very often. She, she flirts with it occasionally. You'll see that ball spinning at times. It doesn't always mean that it's automatically an illegal contact call, but that is one of the indicators that the uh, up official will look for. Wu saves it, Fonseca with a nice play to keep it alive. Really nicely done by Fonseca. 21-20, Central Florida leads. This one coming down to the wire. Polk State with an opportunity to tie it up. Try to slip a set over, no can do. Central Florida with the kill. A uh, two point lead, their largest in a while in this set. Shim will serve. Six foot freshman. Go right at Wu. Overpass, put away. Well, and that's what we were talking about earlier, you have to be careful with those passes. You cannot afford to make mistakes against Central Florida. They will make you pay for it. In baseball, with pitching, you leave a ball up, and they're going to hit it out. And same thing here. You leave a pass up and over the net, it's going to be put away. Outside to Fonseca, big swing dug out by Santana. 
all the way over, but that's okay. I think Santana's goal there was just keep it alive. Net violation, and we are one point away from a victory in set one for the College of Central Florida Patriots, the number one team in the state, number five team in the nation. They overcame Polk State led for a majority of this set. And some adjustments for Coach Cicada. There's a kill for Annalise Fitzy. It's the same score on both courts right now. Miami-Dade leads St. Pete 24-21, and Central Florida leads Polk State 24-21. And Miami-Dade just took set number one from the Titans, and College of Central Florida just took set number one from the Eagles. So both, <laughs> both uh, sets end at roughly the same time. Central Florida goes up ahead. One to nothing with a 25-21 first set win. So good job by Central Florida keeping their composure. They fell behind on numerous occasions. They were able to stay with it. Coach Zaketa used their timeouts wisely, and they were able to pick up the set one victory. We'll be back with set number two. Don't go anywhere. You're watching the FCSA Sports YouTube channel.
We are just about set for set number two here at the Bradenton Convention Center. Good to have you along, tuning in. Central Florida took the first set against Polk State. That one just wide. Central Florida almost able to squeak out a point right there on a dig attempt that went over the net. Well, Polk State starts off this set like they did set number one with the lead. Central Florida was able to hang around, use their timeouts, use some adjustments to hang in and then eventually pull out the victory. 25 to 21, you can see that there on your screen. It will let you know. We'll keep that the whole match. Fonseca, again, they're going after her when she is in there. That's who they're going to serve to. Central Florida trying to hide her a little bit. That one in on the line, killed on the outside by Boussey Eam. Miami Dade and St. Pete were back and forth as well. Miami Dade was able to pull it out 25 21 over the Titans of St. Petersburg College. St. Pete brought two busloads of students to watch the game. That's who you'll be hearing in the background. That one on an overpass sent back by Ian and Alvarez. Central Florida ahead 2 to 1. Just kept alive by Santana. There's Santana again. Libero all over the place making plays. There she is. One more time. She anticipates very well. Wu with a little roll shot up and over. Nobody home. They were expecting her to let one rip. Fonseca. And, you know, it seems like that was a read by Wu. Fonseca sort of took a step back. She went onto her heels. And as soon as Wu saw that, she just rolled it over and knew that Fonseca's momentum was not going to be able to change quickly enough forward to be able to get to that one. Chelsea Chavers receives the serve. Ian airmails one. Excuse me, that was Gage. Stand corrected, I believe. Again, we're in a location that's a little bit harder to see. We're up in a crow's nest. It's a great facility, and thank you to Matt Ennis and the Bradenton Sports Commission. Well, Matt Ennis and Bradenton Sports Commission have done a great job. It's a great location. Nice wide open facility, a lot of room. Not as much room up here, but a great vantage point for us. An easy setup. So again, thank you to Matt Ennis, who's the athletic director at State College of Florida, who is weird seeing them not in this tournament. They're typically one of the better teams in the state of Florida. Also strange not seeing Hillsboro here. Another team, they won it all last year and didn't even make the tournament. That shows you how tough the Suncoast Conference is. Polk State and St. Pete were very good this year. And Polk State now leading 4-2. to two. They've scored three straight points to rally. That serve in on the back line and ace. Coach Siketa, I couldn't tell if she was upset with Chavers or upset with the line judge. I, I believe it was Chavers on making that read, but that was a wicked serve. That is Katia Garcia. Gage blocked. Hussein blocked, kept alive. Let's see. They're going to say she ran across the center line, so it was out. Past the table as well. So she did something over there that she went too far in some capacity, and it was ruled out of bounds. 
They go right at Phoebe Wu with the serve. The set goes to Wu, and Wu crushes one off hands of Buse In. St. Pete crowd over there not happy. The ball from our court here went into theirs and stopped what appeared to be a point for the Titans. And so the, the crowd getting on to the officials and anyone that will listen, basically. Central Florida with the point there to make it 6-4 to four Polk State. Coming in to serve for the Patriots is Ivana Vojvovich. They called a net violation, it looks like, on look like number eight, I believe. Vojvovich will serve. That's Christina Castillo. I believe that's who they called it on. Setter. Alvarez blocked. Well, she's a very good player, but at only 5'6", you can only do so much. You can only jump so high. And when Wu and Veronica Nimkova were there and they timed their jump very well, they sealed the outside line and they were able to send it back into the middle of the floor. So a block for the Eagles. Now serving for Polk State is Aurora Alderman. Dug out by Santana. I've seen some great defense, and to be one of the better teams, to be one of the top teams, you not only have to be good at the net and above the net defensively there, you also have to be good defensively when the other team is taking big swings. You've got to be able to dig some of those out. And you've got to be able, you've really, really, really got to be able to block or at least make the other team have to make adjustments at the last second that throw their timing off a little bit. And that's one of the keys, and that's one of the things that both of these teams do very well. Shim serving. Uh, it's just miss hit by Fonseca. She was looking for something, took her eye off the ball a little bit and just missed it. Just caught a little bit of it and went into the antenna. So that will be out. If the ball hits the antenna, it is out. Phoebe Wu serving for the Eagles. Back set, Alvarez killed. Open window, nobody home for the block. They were just slow getting there, rotating over. The setter, give her a lot of credit on that one. She disguised where she was going to go with the ball, so the setters had to hold for a second, and then that created the open hitting lane for Alvarez. Outside to Fonseca. Nicely dug out by Wu. Wu there again. Attack from the 10-foot line and in on the back line. She just gets enough top spin on it to get it to dive, and Polk State retakes the lead, 9-8. to eight. Well, As I said earlier, this is a state championship-type match. Both of these teams extremely talented. Both teams advanced to the national tournament last year. Alvarez blocked, but a net violation again on number five and number seven for Polk State. That's Alejandra Sanabria and Katia Garcia. 
out of Mexico and Peru, respectively. Natalie Alvarez will serve. Nine to nine, set number two. Central Florida leads the match one nothing. Whoa, that was some smoke coming off the back of that ball. That was Garcia and Alvarez did not even have time to protect herself on that one. Hit her right in the face. A dangerous sport sometimes. Opportunity here for Polk State. No, long on the attack. And just like that, back even, 10 to 10. Well, they had the, had the look just a little bit strong on the attack, but it was there. And those are the types of plays, you know, if you end up getting beat, you look back on and say, you know, you can, t you can handle it if you get blocked or if they make a really good play. But it's those situations where you have the open hitting lane and you have the open floor space and then you just miss and hit long or hit wide. Those are the ones that come back to get you. Central Florida with the lead now, 11 to 10. Rafaela Fonseca serving. She goes to Wu, set outside to look like it went off the tape. Yes, and that will be the call. Never hit anybody for Central Florida. So the right call by the up official, it did just hit the top of the net. That's what sent it back. Now 12 to 10. B.B. Wu, well, she really reached back on that one. A 10 foot line. And Katia Garcia will serve with the Eagles trailing by one. Off the hands, Gage, Alyssa Gage with the kill. 13 to 11, Central Florida. Well, the winner of this match will play the winner of the Palm Beach Santa Fe match that takes place at one o'clock. And that will take place tomorrow at 10 a.m. And the winner of that will qualify for nationals. So it just takes two wins to get to the national tournament. It's usually two pretty difficult wins though. Floater, knuckle float. Buse, Ian, long, no touch. Kill for Polk State. Coach Takeda wanted a touch, but there was none. We have a good vantage point for those. We've been able to see the ball change direction. And the officials have not missed one yet. I'll knock on some wood. At least from my perspective, which doesn't matter. It's the officials, that's all that matters. Well, that's an unfortunate um, situation for Polk, but a break for Central Florida, and you'll take it. There was going to be a dig, but the hands of Annalise Fitzy hit the ball and knocked it out, as opposed to being a dig in and in an opportunity at a set play for Polk State. And instead, the ball bounces the wrong way, and now Central Florida with the point and the serve. Ivana Vojvovic. Did the serving for Central. Alvarez. Phoebe Wu. No wide, no touch. Point, Central Florida. Fonseca down right now. We'll see if is she's injured or if she's just adjusting her. Yeah, she was just adjusting her knee pad and her sock. So that's good news. Never like to see a player stay down on the floor for longer than a couple seconds. You always worry there could be an injury concern, but Fonseca's okay. And she has dealt with some ankle issues this season. Off the hands, killed by Phoebe Wu. Not able to turn those hands back towards 
the floor and it deflects out. Serving for Polk State, Aurora Alderman. Up and over Santana right there. Good pass outside Phoebe Wu. Great dig by Chelsea Chavers on the other side. And there'll be four touches. Oh, no. Wow. They're going to get a net violation. Looked like it should have been four touches on Central. This could be a big point. Team captain Phoebe Wu will go over and talk with the official. Natalie Alvarez, the captain for Central Florida, will go over to hear the explanation as well. So they're going to say the net violation occurred before the fourth touch by Central. Coach DeValle not thrilled with that decision. That was a tough one. I think it happened almost simultaneously, so it was just up to the judgment of the official to make that call. Alvarez right into the clearing for the kill. And now the largest lead of the set so far, 17-14 for the College of Central Florida Patriots. There's one for Annalise Fitzy, just what Polk needed. You don't want to get behind too far to Central Florida because then they can just trade you point for point. And right now, Polk State needs to get a few in a row. Set outside to Fonseca. Dug out by Santana. That was a blast from Fonseca. Outside. Gar that was Garcia with the attack. Bump set. Wu from the 10-foot line. And that one will find the floor. Both teams a little bit out of sync on that point. Polk State able to hang in there just long enough to get it. Phoebe Wu will now serve again for the Eagles. She forgot she was serving. Santa Fe Saints have come in. They're waving hi. We, I do work at Santa Fe College as well as broadcast for the FCSA. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to watch these women do what they do. The athleticism on display at these tournaments is unbelievable, as it is in all the sports for the FCSAA. You can find out more about the FCSAA by going to thefcsaasports.com. Rob Chaney does a good job taking care of that, as does Belinda Wheatcroft over with the FCSA and Kelly Warren as well. Kelly Warren is the lady in charge over there. She does such a wonderful job with these tournaments and with the FCSAA in general. The FCSAA is more than just athletics. It is also brain bowl and all sorts of extracurricular activities for the members of this great State of Florida Community College Alliance here, if you will, the FCSAA. The FCSA sports website is at your ticket to everything. It'll give you all the information on every FCSAA tournament, as well as standings, rankings, stats, um, basically anything that you could want as far as that goes. You can also follow the FCSAA on Twitter and Facebook. And of course, make sure you go subscribe to the YouTube page. You can set up reminders for your phone or for your iPad or whatever to let you know when your team's next match is going to be. Phoebe Wu serving for Polk State out of the timeout, 17-17. That attack wide. Alvarez just, now she's looking down at her hand. She just mishit that one, and it happens. So but Alvarez is a special player over there for Central Florida. It's rare that you see somebody who is an accomplished setter. Wow, talk about special players. There's another one on the other side, Phoebe Wu. But Natalie Alvarez, you know how they do pound for pound boxing rankings where they don't necessarily, they just say who is the best 
boxer in the world, Pound Floyd, Mayweather, Mayweather was always in there, Andre Ward, those kind of guys will. Natalie Alvarez is the type of player that if she was a boxer, you'd say she is one of the top, and she's one of the best players in this state for that reason. She is, she's such a multifaceted player and what she can accomplish both setting, attacking, digging, just does a little bit of everything. That one's in on the line, and Santana wants that one back. It hit the net. It looked like it was going to go wide. It stayed down that line right on it. Good call by the line judge. He was right on top of it. And a huge point for the Patriots. And Polk State will try to answer. Wu with a good pass, set across. Garcia puts it away. Coach Saketa not happy with the officials right now. I can't tell what she's arguing about. I don't know if it was she thought there was an illegal contact because it did have the look of that. If that's what she's arguing right now or if it's something completely different, I'm not sure, to be honest. Now serving for Polk State, Nicole Boots. That serve long, so a break for Central Florida. When you're down 21-18, you will take whatever the other team will give you. There's no question about that. Alvarez will now serve. Great set, good timing. Alejandra Santabria out of Coconut Creek, Florida, the sophomore, puts it away. St. Pete leading 22-21 over Miami-Dade in set number two. Another timeout over here. We'll take a break. We'll be back. 22-19, Polk State leads set number two. You're watching the FCSAA Volleyball Tournament right here on the FCSAA Sports YouTube channel. Back at the Bradenton Convention Center, Polk State leads in set number two, 22 to 19, over the number one FCSAA ranked College of Central Florida Patriots. And the Patriots come right out of the timeout and get a point. That's what they've been able to do. That's what they did in set number one. They did it twice, and they came back and won that one. Well, St. Pete has evened things up with Miami Dade on court two. It is now one to one, and you can hear their Crowd going nuts. Phoebe Wu off the hands of Chelsea Chavers. And a 23-20 lead. Feel like I'm at a soccer match right now. Great atmosphere in here. It's Garcia serving. Gage goes over with it. Now Polk State, an opportunity. Phoebe Wu. That one's going to be long. Did not get on top of it enough underneath that ball. Just over off the net. Alvarez was there. Now there's Busein. Wu. Fonseca with the dig outside to Busein. No touch. 
waiting for those officials to give us that signal. And neither one of them, they touch the top of the flag with the palm of their hand if there's a touch. Otherwise, they just hold the flag straight up in the air. That's, there's your indicators. Set point, 24-21, Polk State leads. Trying to even things up. Chavers, not a great pass, and it's going to result in a free ball opportunity for Polk State. Phoebe Wu will put it away. Well, the mistake on the pass and is going to cost Central Florida that point. And a yellow card has been handed out to Coach Saketa, who was arguing a lot that set, and the official finally had enough and gave her a yellow card. Just like soccer, another yellow card would see her ejected from the match, I believe. Or a red card gets you ejected, I think, is how it is. I need to look that one up. You know what? I've never actually seen one in person happen at a match. They're so rare. Tyler, look that up for me. I'm sort of embarrassed I don't know that. But again, they, they almost never happen at this level. So we'll find out what that is. We'll be back with set number three. We're just about ready to go here in set number three. We are knotted up. And if I sound out of breath, I am. I'm just running. Grab some water and then it's not very close. And it's only three minutes. 
So my apologies about that. That attack just long. One nothing early on, Polk State. Set number three, and that one goes into the net. So Central Florida, without having to do anything, has tied it up. That's the beauty of a service error for, of course, the team that's receiving the serve, not for the team serving. You know, some teams take the approach that they are okay with some service errors because they're gonna be more aggressive with their serves because they want to, to them it is more important to put the other team in a difficult situation as far as trying to run a play. Other teams take the approach of being more conservative and not wanting to give up any points. So it just depends on the philosophy of the coach. And also, I'm assuming that one in by about a foot. Nice shot on the outside by Shim. And of course, it, it makes a huge difference on how confident you are in your player's ability to serve as well. You have to know your personnel and know, you know with some players, you're going to take maybe more of a conservative approach, or depending on the situation where the game is at. There's Natalie Alvarez. Again, we've spoken about her numerous times in this match. Fonseca serving. Wow, what a dig by Chavers. Outside to Alvarez again off the hands dug by Santana. They'll get a chance here. Wu from the 10 foot line. Overly aggressive and into the net. Now five to one Central Florida. That's exactly what Central Florida wanted to do coming out in this third set. Coach Cicada picked up a yellow card from the official. And you could see maybe that, that that was possibly, I don't think she did it on purpose, by the way, but maybe she used it as an opportunity to motivate her team in the same way that a basketball coach does when they get a technical, showing their team, listen, I want to win this as much, if not more, than you do, so let's do it. Let's, let's put forth the effort that we need to get this win. So maybe she was able to turn that into a positive. And so far, it looks like that's the case. We'll step away. We'll be right back. Service ace for Rafaela Fonseca. Sorry, Tyler's doing something for me, looking stuff up, and I forgot to switch the camera back. Sorry, everybody. But believe me, it was a really nice serve by Fonseca. A lot of downward action on it. This time she takes a little bit off of it. There's a kill. Polk State, just what the doctor ordered for the Eagles. They needed a point. It was 6-1. to one. It was starting to get a little bit iffy there. When you're a talented team, even if you're a talented team, when you're playing another team that knows how to take those types of situations and use them to their advantage and do some point trading, you want to make sure it doesn't get too far out of reach. Blocked at the net by Alejandro Senabria. So back-to-back -back points for Polk State. Garcia serving for the Eagles, who are in red. Central Florida in blue, long on the serve. Let's see. 
So a yellow card is basically an official warning from the up official to basically be quiet and stop arguing. Chelsea Chaver serving, eight to three, the lead for the College of Central Florida. The match is tied one to one. Outside, Phoebe Wu, big blast, but dug calmly by Ivana Vojvovic. And another point now, nine to three. The coach Devaye has to start thinking about using that second timeout, switching some things up, maybe make some substitutions. I don't want to let it get away from you. And these are too important, it's too important of a set. Phoebe Wu up and over and down for a point for Polk State. On the other side, on court number two, it is 10 to nine at St. Pete, and the match is tied one to one. Keisha Santana serving. Blocked at the net, right there was Christina Castillo and Veronica Nimkova teaming up for a block and Santana will keep serving. Santana would love to run off two or three points and on the other side Central Florida would love to put an end to this one right here, get the ball back and keep expanding that lead. Well, they didn't have to do much and that's where that aggressive versus conservative philosophy on serving comes into play. Coach Devaye felt like it was worth the risk of trying to serve at a certain individual or to a certain quadrant of the floor. There's a point on an overpass. Gage sends it back for Central Florida. Well, Central Florida has looked very good in this set number three. That serve long, teams trading now service errors. Both teams going for those big, aggressive serves. And neither team's been able to get one in on the last two. And Polk State will see if Aurora Alderman can get it done for them. 11 to six, Central Florida ahead by five. Fonseca receives, back set. And off the hands and out. So a kill on the outside for Shim. Shim will serve. Shim serves, nearly gets an ace. Phoebe Wu just does whatever she can. There's Busein with the kill and Central Florida is clicking right now. Everything they do is working. Their serves, their passing, their setting. They're attacking. The ball comes onto the floor just for a second off of a big time kill over there by St. Pete. Uh, excuse me, by Miami Dade. Outside, Busein off the top of the net. Kept alive. Free ball opportunity for the, no. Does not even make it over the net. Timeout, Polk State, that's their second one, and Coach Devaye needs to make something happen now, and he knows and they've got to turn it around. They trail by eight in this third set. Central Florida clicking on all cylinders right now. We'll be right back. You're watching the FCSAA Volleyball Tournament right here on the FCSAA Sports YouTube channel.
back in Bradenton at the Bradenton Convention Center, beautiful part of the state of Florida. Thank you to the Bradenton Sports Commission as well as State College of Florida Athletic Director Matt Ennis for putting on a great event. They had a great time at the banquet last night. Tom Haggerty took some fantastic photos. You can find them all on the FCSA Sports Facebook page. Some photos of every team. He put a bunch of them up last night. Some great stuff. The FCSA Sports Dot com is where you can find links to all the social media as well as anything you could possibly want to know about the FCSAA, about every sport, all the championship events, when, where, how to watch them. Well, how you watch them is on this channel. You can watch the volleyball tournament. The next one will be basketball in March, followed by vol or, excuse me, softball at the end of April, and then baseball in the middle of May. Those are the currently the five tournaments, basketball is the men and women take place at the same time at, at the College of Central Florida. Off hands and out. Killed by Polk State. Well, Polk State at this point knows they cannot trade points and get back into this match. They have to run off four at a time, maybe five at a time, and it's got to happen pretty soon. Uh, they cannot afford to Again, just trade points back and forth or just score two and, and then lose the serve. That's off the hands. Chelsea Chavers, what a play to keep that one alive. And on the other side, same thing. By the Eagles, outside Fonseca. Looked like it could have been a touch, no. I think it was just a knuckleball that sort of rose up. And the official's right there staring right at it. I think that was more of just a knuckling shot that does what a knuckleball does and just makes weird random. Random moves in the air. Back set to Busein. Phoebe Wu with the over. Killed right in the middle. That's Kainan Paiva from Brazil. Serving for the Patriots is Ivana Vojvovic. What a blast and what a dig by Shim. That was Garcia. She goes down the line that time. Vojvovic waiting for it. Fonseca all the way across off the hand. Santana It's the dig inside the antenna. That was Garcia again. Big swing from Alvarez dug on the back line by Wu. And this will be Garcia attack attempt. Good rally going here for both teams. Fonseca tries to send it over, not able to get enough on it. And a point for Polk State. Service coming from Polk State. They trail 17 to 10. Serve goes to Fonseca. The line by Vojovic. That's a nice play. And that one just sort of tapped over. There's a big space in the middle of the floor and a good read. It happens so quickly. You wonder how sometimes they see all that, but that's what separates the good players and the good teams. They see the whole floor, and they're able to recognize before. They, they sort of know what they're going to do almost before it happens, but then they're also able to adjust. And change up what they're doing to make a play to benefit their team. That's off hands, dug out by Vojvich. Fonseca to Wu. Good opportunity here for Polk State. Garcia on the outside. So three straight points and now it's a five point match. We'll see what Coach Sequeira does. May see a timeout here. We'll find out. It is going to be a timeout. So Coach Cicada will take a timeout. Eagles are fighting back. Trail now 17 to 12, set number three, round one of the FCSAA Volleyball Tournament. We'll be back.
Back at the Bradenton Convention Center, Scott Jamison here with you. Polk State serving to the College of Central Florida. That one's blocked, sent back. And now four straight points. Excuse me, five straight points. It was 17 to eight. It was a nine point lead. And Polk State has run off five in a row. That's what they needed to do. Said four, five, six would be against Central Florida. It's tough to get five points in a row. It's tough to get two points in a row against either one of these teams. So if you can do it, you've got to do it before it's too late. Woo off the hands of Chavers. Cut down to Santana. Both teams making really, really nice defensive plays just to keep the ball alive and give their team an opportunity. And there's Fonseca tipping one over. And Coach Devaye not happy. The official in the back said it hit the ground. I thought it did too. It was tough to tell though there was players in the way. And a big point for the Patriots. You can just see how passionate these coaches are and how badly they want to win. They put so much time, so much effort, so do these players into it that it's tough. When a call doesn't go the way you think it should and it could impact the game, again, you're putting an entire year's worth of time into these games, this game right here. Well, big point for Polk State. And now Garcia will serve. They trail by four. Big swing and a good dig. Kept alive, and Santana will send it over. Chavers there waiting on it. Set to the outside to Alvarez Long. And that is a mistake from Alvarez. She had a clean lane, and she had a lot of floor to work with right there. And she just got too much of it. That's one of those being a 5-6 when you're on the outside. You're not able to get quite as high and get on top of the ball as much. You don't have that same trajectory on it. That one overpassed and sent down by Wu, and she trips over her own player, but... She's okay. 18-16. This is as close as it's been in a while in this set. Garcia still serving for the Eagles. Number 10 ranked team in the nation taking on the number 5 ranked team. She has a vicious serve. She's the one that they've gotten to her serve, and she has been tough. She, that's off the hands killed by Alvarez. And that was a big play for Central Florida. Get the ball out of Garcia's hands. I don't want her to continue serving. Off the hands and killed. 19-17. Well, the way both teams are playing now, you'd almost forget that Central Florida was up by nine at one point in this set. That could end up being an aberration for what has already been a very close match. It's tough to foresee a lead like that occurring again between these two teams. They're so closely matched. Seeing what's going on here, the officials are over there talking to, you can see them there talking to Coach DeValle, the down official discussing something about a substitution infraction possibly or is this a little gamesmanship from coach Devaye getting his team a little bit of rest that'd be a that'd be a veteran coaching move that was the I don't think that's the case but that's the way I think sometimes he's a smart coach so you never know Smart coaches do smart things and they're able to maybe gain an advantage in any way they can legally. But Central Florida answers with the point. There's a substitution now coming in for Polk State is Annalise Fitzy. 
Kaylee Gartino to the bench. Oh, both Palm Beach and Santa Fe are both here. They'll be with their with the first serve at 1 o'clock between those two teams. The winner of that will play the winner of this match, which has turned into a close one after it looked like Central Florida may pull away in this third set. It was 17 to 8, 16 to 7, nine point leads on two occasions. And then Garcia, Katia Garcia got the serve for the Eagles and was able to turn the match around as well as Santana did a good job. That one on the outside, Shim. That's, ooh, he, the official wanted to point down at the line. He sort of hesitated and then said it was out. Now 22 to 18. Looked out. Up and over, Chavers. Hussein. Thought she might have gotten that one in. Good pass and a good opportunity here with Phoebe Wu. You always like your chances if you're Polk State. If Phoebe Wu can get a good set. Miami Dade won set number three, 25-18, and now leads 2-1 over St. Pete. Miami Dade historically has been the best team in this region in the FCSAA as far as volleyball goes. Since 1997, they also had a few different teams, Miami Dade South, Miami Dade Wolfson. But since they just combined into Miami-Dade, which was 1997, there's a kill for Fonseca. They've won 15 out of 19. It's pretty good, huh? I mean, I'm no expert, but Tyler's saying, yeah, not too bad. B.B. Wu with another kill. She's keeping her team in it. 23-20. Well, Polk State has not given up in this set, and I'm sure they'll sit over there and wonder if we wouldn't have gotten behind by nine how this match could have gone. I'm sure Coach DeVaye will talk about that regardless of how, however this set ends, whether they come back and win or whether they end up losing it, and talk about how you cannot afford to get behind like that and then have to fight back. It's a totally different mentality when you're trying to fight back from a nine point disadvantage. Now 23-21, so Polk State keeping this interesting. Fonseca through the blocks. Oh, and she was a little bit quiet over the course of this second and third sets. But she has woken up and come up with two big points for the Patriots. Blazovic serving. Outside to Garcia. Chavers right there waiting on it. Shim to Wu. In the middle to Wu. 10 foot line attack. Long. Point Central Florida set three goes to the Patriots and they lead two to one over the Eagles of Polk State College. Oh, big set number four coming up, so make sure you don't go anywhere. Keep it right here on the FCSAA Sports YouTube channel. Once again, Central Florida leads two to one. We are headed to set number four when we return.
back in Palmetto, Florida at the Bradenton Convention Center. I'm Scott Jamison, and we have set number four on the way here between the College of Central Florida Patriots and the Polk State College Eagles. Both teams over the last few years have been really top, uh, some of the best probably three or four in the top three or four in the state as far as being consistently good. College of Central Florida ranked number one in the state, Polk number three. In the nation, Central Florida's five, Polk ten. Fonseca off Santana. Keisha Santana just sort of absorbed that one. That's what you have to do when the ball's hit that hard. Outside Phoebe Wu. Vojvovich was able to get to it, and that attack long. Central Florida picks up the point there, and just like that, it's one to one. Fonseca will now serve. College of Central Florida, champions of the Mid Florida Conference for the sixth year in a row. Polk State runners up in the Suncoast Conference to St. Pete. Back and forth rally going. Santana keeps it alive. And Wu just with her left hand hits it over. And the teams will reset themselves. Alvarez through the block and a kill. Fonseca serving. That one into the middle of the net. Miami Dade has opened up a five point lead over on court number two. Oh, I don't know about that one. The official saying that she went, I don't know. I do, I don't think that she reached, I think they got to redo that one. I think the official jumped the gun there. She kept her body and her hands, it looked like, on the right side of the net. I, yeah, and they are, they're good, that's the right call. And Coach Cicada is, of course, not going to be happy about it, but the up official had the right, that, that's the, she's, she's again, understandably not happy. And you're a coach for the, the team that the call didn't go their way and it was a, you know, a questionable call, but that was the right decision from the officials there. They got together and talked about it and got it right. So that's all you can ask. She definitely kept herself in the proper you can't go on the other side of the net, basically. The net extends all the way out, if you will. That's to the judgment of the officials. The down official thought that she did. They got together and talked about it. It did not, from here, look remotely like she went too far. But that's why they have an official on either side of the net, one up higher. He was able to see where her hands and her body were. And they redid it, Polk State picks up the point. There's a blast, Wu. Nice pass, Wu from the 10 foot line up and over off the net. Alvarez long, looking for the call, no touch. So a point, Polk State.
Set across to Shim. Garcia looking to the right, hits it to the left. Five to two, timeout coming for College of Central Florida. Polk State off to a good start and a set they've got to win if they want to keep this thing alive. Central Florida can win this set and advance on to the second round. Polk State needs to win this to send it to a fifth set. We'll be back. You are watching the FCSAA State Volleyball Tournament right here on YouTube. Set number four, through the block, Alvarez with the kill. Set number four between Polk State College and the College of Central Florida. The Patriots of Central Florida from the Mid-Florida Conference, champions of the Mid-Florida Conference, lead two to one. Service just long. Good read by Phoebe Wu to let that one go. And that's tough because you stand on the floor, and if it's going to be over your head, you let it go. But that thing was enough of a floater to where it could have died right on the line. It just barely went long. Service coming up for the Eagles. That's Christina Castillo on the line. And it was called out by the... So it's called in by the line judge, but out by the up official. So the call is out. And that looks like the right call. And again, that's why you have the up official up there. He makes the final decision. That was a good call. Phoebe Wu was having a discussion with the up official just to get an explanation of what he saw, and he's saying it was out. I'm, you know, it's, and that one's long. So three straight serves by both teams that have been out. I think if you're Polk, you just aim for the middle right here. I know that's not what they're going to do because they are a little bit more aggressive with their serves. And that's probably why I don't coach. Too many hits for College of Central Florida. And they've got Garcia serving. This is who you want, and this is when you want to take advantage. Katia Garcia, a wicked jump serve for the freshman out of Chihuahua, Mexico. And there's another wicked ace. And there's not too much you can do about that one unless you read it immediately. And Alvarez went back there and stood in that back corner like she was going to stay right there. We'll see what she does. She can see if she steps back on it and see where Garcia decides to go with the serve. Goes right into the middle at Fonseca. Put away nicely by Gage, and they got Garcia off the service line. That was a big, big play by Gage, the sophomore. In the middle. Went all the way across the line, so it's going to be a violation on the College of Central Florida. The setter set it and then fell. 
and fell all the way across, almost nearly across the line. So that was the call and a good one, the proper one by the official. I'm not sure what they're arguing per se. A lot of stoppages for the coaches to have discussions with the officials. Shows you how big the match is. Every point is important. There's one into the net from Nicole Boots, so Central Florida gets it right back. And Gage will serve, 10 to six, the lead for Polk here in the fourth set. First round match, FCSA tournament. Gage serves. That one killed by Fitzy. Substitution into serve Alderman. And she comes in to serve for Nimkova. Well, the winner of this match will advance on to face the winner of Palm Beach and Santa Fe College. The loser is not, they're not done. They're gonna go down and play tomorrow at one against the loser of Palm Beach and Santa Fe. And they'll have to get through a few more games to be able to qualify for the national tournament. Basically, you have the losing teams from the first round and the second round, so six teams in all, that will then drop down into essentially a second bracket to play for a third spot. So you really you only have to win your first two games to qualify for the national tournament. You win today at 10 and tomorrow at 10, and, and you're in. You're heading to Wyoming, and then you play for the state championship. And the teams that lose in those matches then again slide down into the quote unquote losers bracket to battle it out for that District O qualifier. National tournament is November 17th through the 19th in Casper, Wyoming. Beautiful Casper, Wyoming. 12 to eight, Polk State leads in the fourth set. That's off the foot of Wu. Oh my goodness, and she did not even mean to do that. That is unbelievable. Santana keeps it alive. Twice Polk State has done the improbable here. If they get this point, unbelievable. You may want to rewind that one when this point's over just to see that again. And they do know. No touch, long, so Central Florida will get the point. I will say that one was not touched. It was close, it was close. But I'll tell you what, rewind that and watch. Phoebe Wu falls, the ball hits her foot and pops up, and that is legal. It is legal to kick the ball in volleyball to keep it alive. That's just an unfortunate break for Polk State. It was tough to tell if it went off a player's back or not. That's gonna be a point for Polk. It was touched twice by the same player, that was the call. Serving Santana for Polk State, Keisha Santana. Into, is that blocked and out? Yes, it was. Okay, I could, I was waiting for the call if it hit, if it just hit the net or if it was off the hands. It was off the hands of Polk State. You can usually tell by the sound. Since I have my headphones on, that one's off the hands and out, so Polk answers. Yeah. 
Miami-Dade in control on court two over St. Pete College. Trying to punch their ticket to the next round. Possible injury here. Let's hope she, Fonseca is okay. The end of the floor actually came loose. Now oh, there's got these sport courts that oh, they're great for what they are, but this piece of court actually came off and they'll try to get this fixed. That is dangerous. That's scary. It looks like Fonseca's okay. Thankfully, man, that could have that could have been bad. That could have been really bad and it is good to see her on her feet. That would be the last thing you want to see is the court coming apart and having an injury. You know, injuries happen in sports. That's just a part of w the risk you take every single time you step on the floor, but you wouldn't want to see that happen. So luckily she is okay outside to Alvarez, dug out by Wu. Wu, man, she puts some spin and she looks different directions and sit, hits and she sees the whole floor. Nice, nice shot by Phoebe Wu and the College of Central Florida will take a timeout. The Eagles lead 16-11 in set four. The match, however, is being led by the College of Central Florida two to one. We'll be back right after this. You're watching the FCSA tournament live on YouTube. Back in Bradenton, Palmetto area for this 2016 version of the FCSAA Volleyball Tournament. I've gotten our money's worth in this first one. Hope you've enjoyed it. We'll be broadcasting every game of this 2016 tournament right here on the FCSA Sports YouTube channel. Go to FC, thefcsasports.com for everything FCSAA sports. Nice block in the middle by the Patriots. Big play, and they've gotten two points out of this timeout to cut it to a three-point Eagle lead. Well, Miami-Dade is one point away on court number one from taking this match. Pass to the setter, Wu right back in the middle. Set in the middle, off hands and down, killed for Polk State. So Alejandra Santabria, big middle from, uh, tall middle from Coconut Creek, six foot, makes a nice play. SPC stays alive over there on court number two. Twenty-four, twenty-two over there. Here it's 17-13 and a, an attack, a back row attack called. So a point for the Patriots. So uh, Polk State's trying to pull away, but the Patriots are doing their best to not allow that to happen. Good positioning by Garcia to get there. Not able to get to it, and the Polk State, excuse me, the Patriots will get the point and now trail by just two. Miami Dade has won it over on court number two. Uh, 
Well, it was a very close match. St. Pete has nothing to hang their heads about. They're not out of it. They still got a chance. That's blocked and in by Fonseca, 17-16. Three to one, the final over there in Miami defeats St. Pete. St. Pete, the champions of the Sun Coast Conference. Miami Day, the runners up in the Southern to Palm Beach. Well, there's the answer that Polk State needed. They had a five point lead dwindled down to one. Now it's back up to two and Nicole Boots will serve for Coach DeValle. Set outside to Ine. Ine, excuse me. Buse Ine. And that one wide, 18-17. Well, you knew Central Florida was not just going to roll over and let the Eagles have this one. The winner of this match will play at 10 a.m. tomorrow. The loser will play at 1. Neither team's out of it. They're in set number four. College of Central Florida leads two to one. You can see there they won the first set 25-21. Polk answered 25-21 in the second. And then Central Florida won 25-21 again. So we're right on pace for a 25-21 set four. Fonseca up and over the blocks. Santana waiting there for it. Nobody home for the set, so just a, some miscommunication, but a nice play. Fonseca in on the line. Uh, and a net violation was called anyways on the Eagles, so. A point either way to the Patriots. Timeout, Polk State, timeout Eagles. We'll be back right here with more from set number four. FCSAA Volleyball Tournament Live on YouTube. Back here, set four. Polk leads by just a point. They've led by as many as five. That one put away by Phoebe Wu. Oh, they need this one to stay alive. That's the bottom line. Polk has to win this set if they want to play a fifth set. And Central Florida can end it here. Central Florida again answers right back. Set to woo off the net and it's tied up 20 to 20. Central Florida with a chance to take the lead. Fonseca serving. Outside to Garcia, timing a little off, so she just has to dink it over. Nice save by Fonseca. 
Outside to Garcia, put away with a big swing by Katia Garcia. Santana serving. Ahead by one are the Eagles of Polk in this fourth set. Shim off the hands, woo there for the dig in the middle. Yes, that one's gonna fall in. Santa Bria with the kill. Santana serving. Two point lead for the Eagles. Through the block, kill for Alvarez. Big point, one that they needed. Difference between 23 20 and 22 21 is huge. It's obviously pretty self explanatory, but for Central Florida, that was a monstrous point for them to come up with. There's a point there for Central Florida. Now 22-22. Chavers serving. That one in on the back line and a lead now for Central Florida. Well, they have it wrong on the scoreboard in here, which could end up making a big difference. It is 23-22, unless it was messed up up there earlier. Well, this should be set point, I believe. Man, that one looked like it was touched, but the officials are right there. This. Okay. Well, we're going to leave it alone. I thought this was 24. Woo, long on the attack. And now it's 24. Well, Polk State has been their own worst enemy the last few points. Timeout, Polk. Timeout, Coach Devaye will be back. One point away for Central Florida from advancing to the next round. You're watching the FCSA Sports YouTube channel. Chelsea Chavers serving for the match. Outside to Garcia, off the hands and down. Fonseca just a hair late getting to that one in 24-23. You cannot miss with this serve. Back set, Alvarez, there's Santana for it, set to Wu, roll shot, no. 
And a good opportunity here. Gage puts it away. Central Florida wins. They defeat Polk State College and will advance on to the second round to face either the winner of either Santa Fe or Palm Beach State College. The final, three to one. Number one team in the FCSAA advances. Polk State will now move down into the loser's bracket where they will face either Santa Fe or Palm Beach tomorrow with their tournament life on the line. At one o'clock right here on this court, Santa Fe College, Palm Beach State College battling. On court number two, Pensacola State College and Daytona State College. Both of those games will begin at 1 p.m. Thank you for tuning in. Once again, your final, College of Central Florida 3, Polk State College 1. We'll see you again at 1 o'clock with more FCSAA volleyball action. I'm Scott Jameson for Tyler Allen as well as Matt Ennis. We're signing off. We'll see you next time.